l'impératif. Ok, so as usual, when we see a tense, we first work on l'emploi, so when do we use it, and then after that we'll see la formation, so how do we construct this imperatif form, okay? But then first, of course, l'emploi. So, when do we use the imperatif? Well, it's quite simple, we've got three main uses of l'imperatif. The first one, le conseil. So if you want to translate conseil, it would be advice, okay? So if you want to give an advice to someone, okay, in most of the cases you will use this imperative form. Or then if you want to give an order, okay? So normally that's the tense we use if we want to use this order thing. And then uh, la défense, so if you want to forbid something to someone, okay? So in that case you should use l'imperatif, okay? So conseil, ordre ou défense. Okay, we'll see just a few examples just to see how it works. Le conseil, so we've got this example. Pour aller à la gare, tourner à gauche et continuer tout droit. Okay, so to go to the station, aller is to go, la gare, the station, pour aller à la gare, tourner, and that's our first imperatif, à gauche, on your left, et continuer, continue is to continue, to draw straight. Okay, so tourner and continuer here are at the imperative form. Okay, normally at this level maybe it rings a bell and maybe you can uh, think that they look like something we saw previously. Okay, so ordre now if you want to give an order, same thing here. Uh, Faites devoir, okay, so faire is to give. Uh, sorry, to do, sorry, <laughs> and then tes devoirs, your homework, okay, we tend to put that at the plural form in French. Fais tes devoirs, okay, and this is here as well an imperatif, okay, and then let's see now, une défense, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, so of course, in that case, défense, you want to forbid something, so you should use this uh, negative form, okay? So, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant, during, le cours, the lesson, okay? Utiliser is to use. N'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, same thing here. Utiliser is at the imperative form, okay? So, now, first thing. Uh, when we talk about this uh, imperative form, the, the, the first thing that you've got to remember is that we've got only three persons. So there will be tu, nous, and then vous. So the imperative doesn't exist for je, for il and il au pluriel. Okay? And then the second thing that you should remember is that you won't use these pronoms personnels. So normally when we've got a tense, uh, well so far all the tenses that we saw, you use these pronoms personnel, so tu, nous, and vous, okay? The concept with the imperative is that you won't use tu, either, nous, or vous, okay? So you don't use this pronoun personnel, all right? So these two things are the main thing. First, only three persons, tu, nous, and vous, and the second thing, you don't use the pronoun personnel. Okay, let's see now how we build this imperative form. So, we'll see first the premier group, then we'll see the deuxième group, and then the troisième group, and finally, of course, as usual, the irregular verbs. All right, so let's start with the first group, le premier group. So normally, the first group, and it's it's been that way so far, is the easy group because uh, it is regular. In that case for the imperative, well, it will be the tricky group, okay? Because for instance, at the present form, we've got tu parles, okay? So that's the present form of the verb parler, parler to talk from the, f for, from the first group, okay? If we want to make this imperative form, well, it will look like that, parle. So you can see that your final S needs to go away and you will get this parle form. This is your imperative form, so l'imperatif. And then don't forget to put le point d'exclamation here because whether it's 
an order or an advice you should put it okay that's the way it goes and then remember we don't put the pronoun personnel so just this form okay so that's the first form of parler at the imperatif then nous parlons so this is the present form okay well it's quite easy you don't touch it you don't change anything you just put it back here don't put the pronoun personnel of course just put this point d'exclamation at the end and you've got your imperative form so parlons okay and then vous parlez well same thing here you just keep it like it is at the present form and you just put your point d'exclamation at the end so what you need to remember is that the only thing that will change so between the present form here and this imperative form is this final s that normally we don't pronounce but still we write it okay so it needs to go away at the imperative for the to form okay let's see now verbs from the second group so i took this uh, finir finir to end to finish okay so to fini at the present form and have a look it's exactly the same form fini okay point d'exclamation and you take away the pronoun personnel all right then nous finissons exactly the same form finissons don't forget the point d'exclamation at the end and you take away this nous vous finissez and you will get finissez okay so what you've got to remember second group of verbs actually they will be exactly the same as uh, at the present form okay so no change of course you need to take away the pronoun personnel but the forms will stay the same okay so let's see now the troisième group so normally in most of the cases troisième group is the contain all the tricky verbs okay uh, but then if you take the example of prendre prendre is to take tu prends at the present form okay well look it is exactly the same thing keep in mind that of course you should put this point d'interrogation at the end uh, sorry point d'exclamation at the end and then you take you take away this pronoun personnel but still it's the same form all right then nous prenons at the present form we'll get this prenons and the last one vous prenez you will get prenez okay so third group of verbs actually it's quite easy because you don't touch anything you don't change anything you just take away this pronoun personnel and you will have your imperative form okay of course as usual in french we've got some irregular verbs okay so the first one will be aller okay so aller will be like that so the only thing that will change with aller is well what we saw in the first group the final s will go away so you get va allons aller okay the other forms are exactly the same savoir will become sach sachons sachet ouvrir ouvre so the s goes away ouvrons ouvrez okay aller is to go savoir to know ouvrir to open okay then of course être and avoir so être will become soi remember final s is not pronounced soi then soyons soyez all right soi soyons soyez and avoir will become a remember the final a is not pronounced so you only have this re sound a okay a ayons ayé okay a ayons ayé okay so one more time soi soyons soyez then a ayons ayé all right and now remember that all these tricky verbs will be modified if you put a pronoun after okay and we're talking about only two categories of pronouns so we saw the pronouns previously so you should know 
now <laughs> what pronouns I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this pronoun I here, so the Y pronoun, and I'm talking about the pronoun En, okay, so because in most of the, well, not most of the cases, but quite often in, in French, when we use the imperative, we tend to avoid repeating things, so uh, we will put a pronounce if needed and if possible, okay, so in that case, for instance, remember, pense, so it's from the first group, so normally when you put this imperative, you shouldn't put the S, okay, but then if you put this Y, so this pronoun after, then you will have to put back this S just to produce it orally because you will pronounce it pense-zi, pense-zi, okay, pense-zi, all right, so you get to make this liaison. Same thing here, vas-y, vas-y, all right, and then achète-en, achète-en, all right, so that's one important thing if you want to construct this imperative form with pronouns. Then now we'll see how to construct this imperative when we've got the negative form. After that we'll see how it works if you've got only one pronoun and pronoun complément and then one or two in that case and then uh, finally we'll see with the verb pronomino but then now first la negation so I took this parler verb and if you have a look at it so imperatif is parle okay if you want to write the same sentence but at the negative form well it's quite easy because it will be ne parle pas Okay, so you just put your ne before the verb and then the pas after the verb and of course you don't change the, the rest. Finir, finissons, ne finissons pas. Okay, so same concept, ne first, then your verb and after that pas. And then mettre, mettez will become ne mettez pas. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Now, let's see with the pronouns, okay? And then, first part will be with one pronoun, and after that we'll see how to construct that with two pronouns, and it is a bit difficult, if I'm totally honest with you. But now, with one pronoun, let's see, regarde-moi, okay? And it will become, at the negative form, ne me regarde pas. Okay, so, here, normally, remember, these pronouns me okay should come before the verb then the rule at the imperatif is that if you've got these structures so structure affirmative okay so it's not the negative form then they should come after and then this me is one of the pronouns that will change and it will become moi regarde moi okay but when you put back this structure to the negative form so me just become the normal form, so ne me regarde pas. All right. Same thing. So toi will be the second and the last to be uh, drastically modified. So it will become regarde toi. Okay. So the rules stay the same. You put it after. Okay. Regarde toi. All right. But then when you put the negative form, well, it becomes normal. So ne and then te regarde. Okay, keep in mind that as usual for the pronouns, they will come before the verb, okay? So your negative form is coming before and after the whole thing. And then, well, if you've got this le pronoun, or it could be the la, well, it will, it will stay the same, so no modification, so regarde le, and then negative form, ne le regarde pas, okay? Regarde la, ne la regarde pas. It could be regarde nous, okay? Ne, whoops, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake. It should be nous here. Ne nous regarde pas, okay? And the last one, regarde les, will become ne les regarde pas, okay? So keep in mind that it's only this me and te pronouns that will change. They will become this moi and toi, so they will become these forms, and you should put each time anyway after the verb, and don't forget this little thing between the two, because as you can see, we've got to put it.
okay now if you want to put two pronouns in your structure with the imperative well it's something that's uh, well it's not really rare to to use that okay but then well we've got some of course as usual quite strict rules and that's the thing the first part that you will have will be me or m apostrophe te or t apostrophe lui then nous and leur okay so that will be the first thing that you will have to put and after that will come your pronoun en okay that's normally the the the, the association of pronouns that we've got okay so let's see them in action for instance par le ment okay so as you see first you put this m apostrophe and then you put your pronoun okay don't forget that they must come after your verb because it's the imperative parle man okay but if you put them at the negative form then you will get ne man parle pas okay remember negative form then they come back as they should be all the time so before the verb all right so another example parle nous en okay here and then we will get ne nous en parle pas okay sorry for the examples but I, I tend to not to make the liaison when i make these little examples just because i think it's more clear not to make the liaison okay but then of course parle nous en ne nous en parle pas should be the the way you should pronounce them okay but still just to make it clear where you put them and to avoid any mistake or anything like that okay so same thing here so parle and then after that you've got to pronoun and second pronoun en but when you put the negative form ne and then you put them back before your verb okay uh, second possibility that you would have would be the pronouns like le la and les okay and they will come first and after that you will have this moi lui nous and leur okay let's see a few examples now donne la moi okay donne la moi so exactly the same rule as we saw previously okay so you put them after your verb like that okay but of course when you put the negative form then you put them back look ne me la donne pas donne la moi ne me la donne pas then donne la nous and it will become ne nous la donne pas all right so i know this is really difficult so don't worry because many students have some difficulties at the beginning okay but then little by little you will understand the structure and the way to construct that okay just try to keep that in mind okay try to listen to persons and then try to use this structure but remember that in many cases it's possible to avoid repeating or to avoid sorry using the, the pronouns by repeating a few words okay so it's well it's an option as well okay so let's see now les, les verbes pronominaux okay and so I took this uh, se regarder verb, okay, so regarde-toi, and then you if you put the, the same structure, but then uh, at the negative form, so ne te regarde pas, regardons-nous, ne nous regardons pas, regardez-vous, ne vous regardez pas, okay, so exactly the same thing as we saw previously, so toi, nous, and vous should come after the verb, okay but when you put this structure at the negative form so te nous and vous should come before the verb okay so that's the les liaisons obligatoires uh, so since we started this uh, learn french with vincent videos i've been talking 
um, quite much about uh, les liaisons, so the, these little links that you can put between, uh, between the words. Um, and so, of course, we've got some rules for these, uh, these things. And so I thought that maybe it might be useful to, to just cover this topic uh, right now because I've been receiving few messages uh, regarding this topic. So this uh, video will only focus on les liaisons obligatoires, so the one you should make, okay? And after that, we'll see, uh, well, the one that you shouldn't make and then uh, the one that are optional, so it's possible to make them or not. Okay, but in, the, in this video, we'll focus only on the, the, the one that you should make. So let's start now. So the first uh, situation when you should make it, it's when you use these articles définis. So le, la, le, remember, the in English. And then when you get the plural form, so it's le, it's like that. And then it ends with this S. If you've got a word after and then it's starting with a vowel like this one ami friends then you should make the liaison les amis all right les amis then second possibility here les articles indéfinis so in english a uh, but then in french we've got the difference between the masculine un une des okay and then i took the plural form just to make it clearer so des here ending with s and then you've got a word after étudiant students so it starts with a vowel, so you should make the connection, the liaison between the two, des étudiants. All right. Other possibility when you get these, well, the, the adjective possessive. So when you say my, your, etc. So in French, it would go like that. So in that case, my children. So it should be at the plural because this children is at the plural. Okay, so it goes like that. And then ending with S. Enfant, children is starting with a vowel, so you should make the liaison. Mes enfants, mes enfants. All right. And of course, les adjectifs démonstratifs. Sorry, this or these. Okay. And in that case, I took the plural form, so these here, and then ordinateur computers. So you should make the liaison between S and O. Ces ordinateurs, ces ordinateurs. Okay, so, les amis, des étudiants, mes enfants, ces ordinateurs. So, in these cases, you should make the liaison without any doubt, okay? And so, we also have this interrogative situation. So, when you ask a question, remember, we use this quel, okay? It's what, but then, of course, as usually in French, we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, feminine plural. In that case, I did use this option, it's feminine and it's plural, so that's the reason why I write this quel like that. And it ends with S. Option is starting with a vowel, you should make the liaison between the two. Quelles options? Quelles options? All right, and then if you well, heard from the beginning, you know, the, the concept of this liaison is that you don't make any pause between the two words. Quelles options? It's really a link between the two. Quelles options? Indéfini, well, exactly the same rule. In that case, you've got certain, indéfini, and it is here at the plural form. Individu, plural, starting with a vowel, you make the liaison. Certains individus. Certains individus. All right. And the last situation for this page, numéro. Okay, so if we're talking about, about the numbers, in that case, I took trois, okay, three, just because it ends with S, as you can see here. And then appartement, apartments, starting with a vowel. So you should make the liaison. Trois appartements. Okay, so quelles options? Certains individus, trois appartements. So in all these cases, you should make the liaison. All right, but then it continues. So now situation where you've got a sentence in which you've got first the adjective and then the noun, like here for instance. Les beaux enfants, okay, so you make the liaison between beau, so adjective and enfant. And here it's quite interesting because even if you've got this X, well, phonetically it will be like Z, so like if it would be an S, okay. Les beaux enfants. All right, les jeunes étudiants. All right, so same thing here, the link between the two. Les jeunes étudiants. All right, and then if you get this 
pronoms personnels, so I, you, he, she, etc., and then your verb, so in that case, I took vous, okay, and then the verb to être, uh, sorry, <laughs> the verb être, to be, uh, so in that case you get vous êtes, vous êtes, so you make the liaison between the two, and then avoir, to have, nous avons, nous avons, all right, so remember, pronom personnel, then the verb, you make the, li the liaison. And then it's quite interesting because this verb être, so to be, if it's at the third person of the singular, so he is or she is, il est, elle est, okay, then definitely you should make the liaison if you've got something after. So like here, for instance, il est admirable, ta, ta, il est admirable, okay, elle est intéressée, elle est intéressée, all right, so in all these cases you should make the liaison, and in that case it's with t. Il est admirable, elle est intéressée. And it continues. If you've got this uh, structure in which you've got the pronom complément before the verb, okay, so we've been doing a few videos regarding this topic. If you don't know how to make them well, you can check them. Uh, there are many videos regarding this topic. And so remember the pronoun should be before the verb. So when you've got this kind of structure, subject, pronoun, verb, in that case you should make the liaison between the two. Il nous aide. Il nous aide. Elle vous admire. Elle vous admire. All right, so z, z here as well. Elle vous admire. Il nous aide. Okay? If you've got the verb first and then you put your pronoun after, because normally that's the way we should proceed, you know, if we want to construct a correct question. Normally you should put the first the verb and after the pronoun, okay? So in this situation, then you should make the liaison. And so this little D here is in red just to show you that you won't pronounce it like D to make the liaison, but you will pronounce it like T. And so you will get prend-il. Prend-il, okay? But then here, prend-elle, okay? So you get your T and then prend-elle, all right? So prend-il, remember, D pronounced like T, and here, prend-elle, all right? And so if you want to uh, construct a structure in which you will have whether une conjonction, so these little words that will link uh, whether words or then sentences, or then if it's in preposition, many videos regarding that topic as well, or adverb, but then they should be only one syllable long, okay? So, like that, quand elle, all right, same rule here, remember, when you will have this D, you will phonetically pronounce it like T, quand elle, dans un, okay, and in that case you get this preposition dans, okay, and then the article, dans un, all right, and here we've got this adverb, beaucoup, and then admirer, beaucoup, beaucoup admirer, sorry, beaucoup admirer, all right, quand elle, dans un, beaucoup admirer, all right, so let's repeat them, il nous aide, elle vous admire, prend-il, prennent-elle, quand elle, dans un, beaucoup admirer. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon Q. And in this lesson we'll see together les liaisons interdites. So remember les liaisons, it's actually this little link that we can put between the words when we read or when we speak. Okay, so in the previous lesson we saw les liaisons, so the one that you have to do, okay, so the rules that you get to follow if you really want to make this liaison properly. And then in this video, well, we'll try to see uh, the one that you shouldn't do, okay, because in some cases it's not possible to make this liaison. Okay, so let's see now. And the first one is actually the maybe the most important one because uh, normally students tend to make this mistake quite often at the beginning, which is totally normal because if you think about that, uh, we've got this E conjunction, so it means and in English, okay? And so normally students tend to think that when you've got, you know, lui, et elle, like that, well, why not 
put this little liaison between the two because it would be quite logical after all we tend to make it and to put it you know a little bit everywhere but in that case sorry about that the rule is really strict so after this conjunction e like we've got here you don't make any liaison so no links after e okay so if you want to read it correctly here it will go like lui et elle all right, so don't think about putting something between the two. Don't think about producing something like lui et elle. No, 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 nothing here. Lui et elle. Okay, and it will be exactly the same thing in this example here. Toi et eux. All right, so no liaison, even if it's a bit tempting because it would be possible, but then no 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 so when you get this a remember no liaison after okay then after that we've got this structure or this possibility in which you've got a question like here and here okay and you start your question with an adverb okay and that's of course what we call adverb interrogatif because it's a question so comment how as tu okay so do you have okay or have you but in that case remember that if you start with an adverb like here so avec an adverb don't make the liaison so you don't say comment as-tu no 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 nothing here comment as-tu all right exactly the same thing here quand when and then ont il here you get this little thing quand ont-ils quand ont-ils all right, so you don't make a liaison here between the two. Okay, it was the second rule. And then remember that if you've got a noun, and if this noun is at the singular form, then you shouldn't make the liaison. Like here, for instance, un chien, a dog, adorable. Okay, here it would be tempting to do it, but then no, no liaison, so un chien adorable. Okay, same thing here, une maison étrange, okay, house, and then étrange, strange, une maison étrange, un chien adorable, okay, remember, you shouldn't make any liaison here after this word and after this word. And then, if you've got this participe passé form, so it does mean that whether it is at the like here or here it is at the passé composé form all right so ils sont sortis okay so if we take the time to have a look at it here you've got first être and here you've got the participe passé form and the whole thing gives you this passé composé okay exactly the same thing here so we've got the uh, the verb être to be and after that here we've got this participe passé form and this form together give you the passé composé form okay so in that case if you think about uh, what we said so après le participe passé so if we spot it this is the participe passé sorti and this is here the participe passé and well both and with s it would be possible to make a to make a link you know between s and r here and s and r u here but then the rule is quite strict you don't make a liaison after your participe passé. Okay, so ils sont sortis à 15 heures. All right, so no liaison here, no link between the two. Ils sont sortis à 15 heures. Exactly the same thing here. Elles sont allées au cinéma. All right, elles sont allées au cinéma. So no liaison after your participe passé here okay and then well a quite important thing as well après un verbe conjugué avec tu many persons sent me messages regarding this thing when i do the, the, the uh, conjugation and when i conjugate the, the verbs they say that you know that it's try quite strange because you don't make the liaison uh, when it's for two well just because it's well it's a rule you shouldn't make the liaison when you conjugate a verb at the to form okay don't ask me why 
<laughs> because basically there's no logic in that you know uh, it's just the way it is so that's one rule and uh, honestly it, it's a bit strange I know especially when you're learning language for what reason only for one person you shouldn't make the liaison but unfortunately for you that's the way we do it so let's respect the rule so in that case if you look at uh, the sentence so you get first your subject so tu and then here you get a okay and so this is the verb être and the second form a second person of the singular so tu es admirable all right and in that case well don't make the liaison okay tu es admirable and it will be exactly the same thing here tu parles avec nous so no liaison here between parle and avec okay tu parles avec nous all right so that's the rule when you've got a verb at the tu person okay so second person of the singular don't make a liaison after the verb all right and then when you've got these interesting structures so if we've got the the, the pronoun so the subject and it's after your verb like here because normally that's the way I mean that's the official way that we should um, well you we should respect if we want to ask a question first we should put the verb then we should put the subject okay so veulent-il all right so it should go like that and then if you've got well something after like here aller avec nous okay it could be possible if you think about that we've got an s here and then we've got a vowel after but then the rule goes like that if you've got this structure so in which your pronoun is coming after your verb because it's a question then you don't make the liaison okay veulent-ils aller avec nous okay exactly the same thing here parle-t-il en anglais okay so no liaison after your pronoun okay just because the structure is like that first you've been having your verb then your pronoun then you don't make a liaison and another rule is if you've got like here ses ordinateurs or like here mes étudiants okay so in these two sentences ses ordinateurs it's the subject okay mes étudiants subject and then you've got the verb coming after all right and so the concept of the idea is that if you've got a subject like that but then it's what we call a group nominal okay so in that case it's not a first name or then it's not the pronoun je tu il etc but it's you know a word or a group of words and in that case you don't make a liaison after this group nominal so in that case ces ordinateurs you don't make the liaison between this word and the verb that will come after okay ces ordinateurs ont and the sentence continues okay same thing here mes étudiants apprennent and the sentence continues so the concept is quite strict remember you've got your subject so it must be something like that okay so you've got group of words okay and after that you won't make the liaison with the verb okay and then this is quite interesting because it's what we call an H aspiré okay so for instance in this case well I did put that in a big letter because it's a place in uh, Paris okay so but in that case still even if you've got this H, okay it belongs to this aspiré group of words so containing this H, okay and it means that you won't have the possibility to make the liaison between your article and your word so in that case you shouldn't make the liaison so you shouldn't say les al but it sh you should say les al 
Okay? Le al. Same thing here. Ash. Uh, well, it's an ax. Okay? And in that case, it's the, the plural form. Le ash. Okay? Le ash. Okay? So you don't say les ash, but you say le ash. All right? So I did write two other examples. In that case, harp, so the musical instrument, instrument, des harp, okay, so you don't make the liaison between the two, des harp, and the last one, hiérarchie, des hiérarchie, okay, so just to show you that it's not only with a, because I've got three examples with a, but then in that case it's i, okay, des hiérarchie, all right, so no liaison here, 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 and here. All right, because these words are starting with what we call ash, aspiré. And that's it. Okay, so if you want more videos, youtube.com slash imagier, or the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Liaison optionnelle. So it does mean that it's possible to make them. It's not uh, compulsory, but still... Uh, it would be advisable to make them, so I know for what reason should I do only one video for that. Well, it's just to give you the opportunity to choose whether you want to make them or not, because in both cases it would be possible. Okay, so let's start now. Les liaisons optionnelles. And the first one will be après le verbe aller. Okay, so remember that it will be possible first to say je vais avoir un chien so you don't make the liaison or if you want to make it it is possible je vais avoir un chien okay first option possible je vais avoir un chien then if you want to make the liaison it's also possible je vais avoir un chien ils vont habiter en France without the liaison or ils vont habiter en France with the liaison okay Ils vont habiter en France. All right. Second possibility, après le verbe être, exactly the same thing. It's possible to read this sentence like, je suis intéressé par l'histoire. Or then, you can read it with the liaison, je suis intéressé par l'histoire. Second example here, ils sont arrivés ce soir. Or then, ils sont arrivés ce soir. Après le verbe avoir, well, it's exactly the same rule. Nous avons une amie. Or then, nous avons une amie. Ils ont un chien. Or if you want to make the liaison, ils ont un chien. Same thing with the verb falloir. Il faut admettre ses erreurs. Or then, if you want to make the liaison, il faut admettre ses erreurs. Il faut étudier beaucoup. Or, with the liaison, il faut étudier beaucoup. The verb devoir will follow exactly the same rule. First option, je dois être chez lui dans 15 minutes. Or then, Je dois être chez lui dans 15 minutes. Ils doivent attendre mon arrivée. Or if you want to make the liaison, ils doivent attendre mon arrivée. Same thing with the verb pouvoir. Elle peut arriver demain. Or then if you want to make the liaison, elle peut arriver demain. Nous pouvons inviter cette personne. Or if you want to make the liaison, nous pouvons inviter cette personne. It will be exactly the same thing with the verb vouloir. Je veux entendre sa musique. Or then with the liaison, je veux entendre sa musique. Okay, remember, we had the same rule. Even if we've got this X at the end, well, with the liaison, it will sound like Z. Okay? Je veux entendre. Je veux entendre. Je veux entendre sa musique. Okay? Then, elles veulent attendre avec moi. 
or if you want to put the liaison, elles veulent t'attendre avec moi. And then, other option, entre un nom pluriel et l'adjectif. Okay, so here we've got a group of words. If you look carefully first, you've got a noun, then you've got an adjective. Well, both are at the plural form. Okay, and so the rule is like entre un nom pluriel et l'adjectif. So we're talking about here and here. Okay, but it's optional, it's not compulsory. You don't need to do it if you don't want to do it, but it's possible. Okay, so first option des personnes étrangères. Or if you want to make the liaison, des personnes étrangères. Des amis irlandais. Or if you want to make the liaison, des amis irlandais. And then I made two more here. Des étudiants intelligents, or if you want to make the liaison, des étudiants intelligents. Des lampes artificielles, and if you want to make the liaison, des lampes artificielles. Le subjonctif. Okay, so it's quite important, and then as usual, we introduce, when we introduce a mode or a tense, then we'll divide the video in two parts. The first part will be l'emploi, so when do we use le subjonctif, and then the second part will concern la formation, so how do we construct this subjonctif. But let's first see l'emploi, so when do we use le subjonctif. And so we'll use le subjonctif when we want to express une obligation, une volonté, une possibilité, un doute, un sentiment, une appréciation, un jugement. Okay, so that's the idea. So if you want to express une obligation, something you have to do, une volonté, something you want to do, une possibilité, possibility, un doute, a doubt, un sentiment, a feeling, une appréciation, appreciation, and then un jugement, a judgment. So in these cases, we'll use after this verb, the subjonctif. Okay, so let's see first une obligation. So for example, we'll have this verb, falloir, and then the construction, falloir que. So you will see that when we talk about le subjonctif, each time we will have after the verb we will have que and then the following verb will be at the subjunctive form okay so that's the concept all right so for instance if we have a look at these uh, sentences sorry so falloir it's to need to have to okay il faut que tu écoutes all right il faut que tu écoutes all right, and then in that case here, so we'll see a bit later, of course, how to make it, but still, you've got this verb, écouter, and this form is the subjunctif. Okay? Il faut que tu écoutes. Il faut que les étudiants travaillent. All right? Il faut que les étudiants, and then here you've got the verb, travailler, to work, and this form is the subjunctif. Okay, so so far it doesn't look that difficult because if you look carefully, it looks like something that we encounter a long time ago when we started to learn French, maybe unit one or unit two, okay? But then we'll see that a bit later. So, une volonté, something you want to do, and then, well, the verb that normally we tend to use is the verb vouloir, vouloir, to want, okay? Vouloir que will be followed by le subjonctif. For instance, je veux que mon frère vienne me voir. All right? Je veux que mon frère, my brother. Here you've got the form, uh, la subjonctive form of venir, venir to come, me voir, see me. Okay? And then, le directeur veut que les employés arrivent à l'heure so the director, the director, veut que les employés, the employees, arrive uh, to arrive à l'heure on time. Okay, and in that case, 
arriver, to arrive here, it's the subjunctive form. Okay? So, une possibilité, possibility. So, let's see what we've got. The structure could be être possible que. Okay? To be possible. Hein? Donc, être possible and then que, as usual, remember. So, for instance, il est possible que mes amis viennent ce soir. Okay? Il est possible que, so it could be translated like, it is possible that, okay? mes amis, my friends, and then venir here to come, so this form here is the subjunctive form, ce soir, tonight. So in that case, you should put your verb here at the subjunctive. Un doute, a doubt, so let's see what we've got, and the structure, so Être sûr, to be sure, okay? But then, of course, you should put the negative form of this, to be sure. So, ne pas être sûr que, okay? Because you want to express a doubt. So, je ne suis pas sûr qu'il parle anglais. Okay? So, I'm not sure that, and then, il, he, parler, to talk, to speak, anglais, English, okay? And here, you've got your verb, Parle, and this form is the subjunctive. Okay? Let's see the next one. Un sentiment, a feeling. Okay? So for this sentiment, let's see what we've got. So we could have avoir peur que. Okay? To be afraid that. Avoir envie que. Well, it's, it could be translated as to want. Okay? To fancy. Être désolé que. To be sorry that. Être content, to be happy, satisfied, que. Okay? All right? For these structures, then you should make a subjunctive after. So they should be followed by une forme subjunctive. Okay? And then let's see une appréciation. Une appréciation, for instance, we could have this préféré, to prefer, préféré que. Okay? Aimer. Mieux, mieux is better. Aimer, to like or to love, better that. Okay? Aimer mieux que, and then these structures should be followed by une forme subjonctive. Okay? And then un jugement, judgment, so it could be c'est important que, it's important that, il est dommage que, il est regrettable que, and they should be followed by a subjunctive form. All right? Be careful. The following verbs. Croire, to believe. Penser, to think. Trouver, to find. Especially when you, you, when you express your, your opinion. Okay? To find, I find that. Être sûr. Okay? So, these verbs are normally followed by the indicative form. So, all the tenses we saw so far, okay, but then when you put these verbs at the negative form, then they should be followed by the subjunctive, okay, so keep that in mind, so croire, penser, trouver, être sûr, if you want to use these verbs and put them at the negative form, they should be followed by the subjunctive, okay. Let's see now how we'll make this subjunctive form. And so, the tricky thing normally when we talk about the subjunctive is that you will have two different parts. Okay? So, the important thing is that you must know by heart, of course, the present form so of the verb that we saw a long time ago. Okay? So, because the, the idea is that you will have to use this il at the plural form here. Okay, and this form of the present will help you to build the forms of the subjunctive for je, for tu, for il, for elle, for il, and for elle. Okay, so the, f the form of your verb at the present, at the third person of the plural, will help you to construct the subjunctive form for all these persons here. And that's the difficulty because, of course, for nous and vous, well, you will have to use 
the new form of the present to construct nous and vous. And that's the tricky thing of the subjunctive. So that's the reason why in make many cases students tend to, uh, tend to say that, oh my god, it's too difficult. It's just because we've got two different ways of making, well, the form for je, tu, il, elle, il and elle, and then nous and vous. But then don't be afraid because in most of the cases you will see that it's quite easy, all right? So, you know what? I will take a tricky verb just to start. We'll take a tricky verb and after that you will think, you will think that the rest is really easy. So, let's take prendre for instance. And so, as I told you, the idea is to take the present form of the verb, okay? And the first one so that we should take is the plural, so third person of the plural, and it goes like il pren, okay, prendre is to take, il pren, so that's the present form, okay, for il. And then we've got nous prenons, okay, because remember, we're using this nous prenons form, we'll use it for nous and for vous of the subjunctive, okay. So we can spot first the ending, because we know that ENT is the ending for il, and then ONS is the ending for nous, and of course what we'll do is we'll take them away. So we'll put the endings away and we'll keep only this first part here, and the first part here. And so what we'll do is we'll take this first part, okay, so the part that we took away from this il form, all right, and then we'll put je. Je, so we take it back, have a look, it goes here, and we put the ending. The ending for e will be e, for je, sorry. The ending for je will be e, okay? The ending for tu will be es. The ending for il, elle will be e. And the ending for il, elle, at the plural form, will be ENT. Okay? If you look carefully, it's not that strange. I mean, these endings are quite common and we've been, we've been encountering these endings, you know, previously. If you think about the, the present form, then it looks a bit familiar. Okay? So, je prenne, tu prennes, ils prennent, elles prennent, ils prennent et elles prennent. Then phonetically, as usual, remember, we've got only one form here. It is exactly the same form, so we pronounce it the same way, but of course, as usual, we write it differently. Okay? So keep in mind that ending for je is e, ending for tu is es, ending for il, elle is e, and ending for il, elle at the plural form is ent. Okay, so it's the first part, okay, because if you remember, we had as well this part from nous, okay, and as I told you, the difficulty of the subjunctive is just because we will have a difference of construction for nous and vous, and so in that case, we'll take this first part here, we put it here, and we put the ending e o n s, yon. And the ending for vous is ye. So we get nous prenions, vous preniez. All right? So if we think carefully, ending e o n s for nous, e -E z for vous. Okay? If, in, if you remember, it looks quite familiar because it's the ending as well for the imparfait form that we saw a while ago. Okay? So let's have a look now. The full thing, so, que je prenne, que tu prennes, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne, que nous prenions, que vous preniez, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne. And this is the reason why students are a bit worried, usually at the beginning, just because, as we saw, we've got two constructions, two different constructions, so for the first part here and here, and the second part for nous and vous, okay? But I took this 
special verb, prendre, to take, on purpose, because I thought that it was quite difficult. So, you know, now you can see the way to make it. And after that, well, first, we'll see back again one more time the ending. So, E, E, S, E, I, O, N, S, I, O, Z, E, N, T. All right. But then, now, we'll see the verbs from the first group. So, regular groups ending with E, R. After that, we'll see the second group, regular group, ending, verbs ending with ER. Remember, not all the ER verbs, but still. After that, we'll see verbs from the third group. After that, we'll see irregular group, uh, irregular verbs. And then finally, we'll finish with être and avoir. Okay, so let's see now the first group. And you will see that it's quite easy because we get que je parle, que tu parles. Qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, que nous parlions, que vous parliez, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle. All right. This is the subjonctif. And it's quite interesting because if you take the time to look at it, que je parle, it's exactly the same form as the present form. Que tu parles, same thing. Qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, exactly the same thing as the present form. And then qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, same. It's like, your, like the present form. Que nous parlions and que vous parliez, it's exactly the same thing as the imparfait. All right? So, normally, and that's the thing, if you watched all the videos, especially the video concerning the present tense and the imparfait, well, you know this subjunctive form already. Let's take an, a second verb. Que j'écoute, que tu écoutes, qu'il écoute, qu'elle écoute. Que nous écoutions, que vous écoutiez, qu'ils écoutent, qu'elles écoutent. And it is exactly the same thing. This is like the present, like the present, like the present, and like the present. This is like the imparfait, and this is like the imparfait. Okay? Parler is to speak or to talk, écouter, to listen. All right? So now let's see how it goes for the second group. All right, so second group, I took the classic example, finir, to finish or to end. Que je finisse, que tu finisses, qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse, que nous finissions, que vous finissiez, qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse. Okay, so you can see that, well, you've got the endings, E, E, S, E, O, N, E, O, N, S, sorry, E, O, Z, E, N, T. All right. And then, que je choisisse. Que tu choisisses, qu'il choisisse, qu'elle choisisse, que nous choisissions, que vous choisissiez, qu'il choisisse, qu'elle choisisse. All right? So the good thing is that for the second group of verbs, well, basically, you don't have any difference, any major difference between the je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, and il, elle. You've got the same first part, okay? You just need to put the endings after. All right, so third group now, and I took the verb partir, que je parte, que tu partes, qu'il parte, qu'elle parte, que nous partions, que vous partiez, qu'il parte, qu'elle parte. Same thing here, not really difficult because anyway, it is exactly the same form, you just need to add at the end the endings. Part, 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 partions, partiez, part. Let's take another example, the verb mettre, to put, que je mette, que tu mettes, qu'il mette, qu'elle mette, que nous mettions, que vous mettiez, qu'il mette, qu'elle mette. So you can see that for these verbs, it's exactly the same thing. So actually, the first part will stay the same. You just need to put the endings according to what we saw previously. So E, E, S, E, I, O, N, S, I, E, Z, E, N, T. Okay, but then, of course, we've got some irregular verbs because we're talking about French language. So, let's start now. And so, the verb faire, to do, will become que je fasse. Okay, so here you've got the ending. And so, it does mean that this first part will stay the same. You just need to change the endings. Que tu fasses e s, qu'il fasse e, etc., etc. All right. Savoir will give you 
que je sache. Okay, same thing here. E is here, but then of course you will take it away, and after that you will put the endings that we saw a s a e o n s e a z a n t, according to the person, of course, and then pouvoir uh, can will give you que je puisse exactly the same thing here. You take the e uh away, and then you put the endings according to the person. Okay, so remember, faire, uh, sorry, faire, <laughs> to do, que je fasse, savoir, to know, que je sache, pouvoir, can, que je puisse. All right? And then, well, of course, as I did put that, I forgot that. Ending e, e, s, e, i, o, n, s, i, o, z, e, n, t. Of course, we've got some more tricky verbs and aller is usually one of them. Aller means to go. Have a look. Que j'aille, que tu ailles, qu'il aille, qu'elle aille, que nous allions, que vous alliez, qu'ils aillent, qu'elles aillent. Okay, sorry, I did forget the feminine form here. Um, okay, so que j'aille, listen to me, aille, okay, que tu ailles, Qu'il aille, qu'elle aille, que nous, and that's the difference here, allions, allions, okay, que vous alliez, okay, I don't make the liaison just for you to listen carefully, alliez, okay, so if you want to make the liaison, que vous alliez, okay, and then, qu'ils aillent, and the feminine form, qu'elles aillent, all right, and so the other tricky verb is vouloir, want, Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous vouliez, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille. All right. Same thing here. We'll have a quite important difference between the je, tu, il, il, and nous, vous. Okay. Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous Vouliez qu'il veuille qu'elle veuille. And of course, we'll finish with être and avoir because they are usually quite tricky. Être, so to be, will give you at the subjonctif que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. Okay, so as usual, good news is that Soi, 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 and then soi here. You write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way. Okay, and then soyons here for nous, soyez for vous. So I repeat, que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. And last but not least, avoir, to have. Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. All right, so same thing here. Est, 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 and est. Phonetically the same, but try to remember how to write them, okay? And then, ayons, ayez. So let's read them one more time. Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, Que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient.